All right, micro strategy yesterday, big milestone. As many people know, Michael Saylor, absolute giga chat of Bitcoin, spent a couple billion dollars buying up Bitcoin, now holds over 100,000 Bitcoin in his publicly traded company, MicroStrategy. It is a business intelligence software company. Uh, this is not a real photo, but it looks awesome. Jordy did a great job with the Bitcoin <laughs> cake. Uh, usually for the one year anniversary, they would only have one candle. We couldn't find a photo like that, so it has four. Uh, but... Michael tweeted and he said, my rookie year playing the Bitcoin Cyber Hornets is officially over. I want to thank my teammates for all their support and coaching they have provided to me along the way. It's a sport. That's what we play now. We play the Bitcoin sport and we're winning. It's awesome. The Bitcoin Cyber Hornets, Michael, one year ago yesterday, came out and said that MicroStrategy is going to adopt Bitcoin as their primary treasury reserve asset. So... A year later, let's check in on what's happening. Because when Michael said this, everyone was yelling and screaming, and they were saying how stupid he was, how risky it was, this is insane, all this stuff. Well, Dylan LeClaire, the on-chain analyst at Bitcoin Magazine, went, and what did he find? Well, one year ago today, MicroStrategy announced the adoption of Bitcoin as the company's treasury reserve asset. Since then, MicroStrategy up 448%, Bitcoin up 300%. Seems like it might be working out. Dylan, I think you might be onto something here. Now, why is it that MicroStrategy, a business intelligence company that has Bitcoin on the balance sheet, billions of dollars worth, is outperforming Bitcoin? Well, that's simple. One is because MicroStrategy has a cash flowing business, meaning that it has an actual asset that they sell software, they get paid revenue, and so there's a business on top of the Bitcoin. The second thing is that MicroStrategy allows a certain cohort of investors on Wall Street to buy their stock and get indirect exposure to Bitcoin that is not allowed to buy, let's say, a trust, an ETF, uh, or invest in the private market. So when you combine holding billions of dollars of Bitcoin on your balance sheet with a real business that sells software, you have a levered bet on top of Bitcoin. You have the underlying Bitcoin value. If that goes up, then your stock price should go up. But also you have a business that can be valued on top of that. And then you say, by the way, this is the first time that certain types of investors are going to be able to buy a public security and get exposure to that underlying Bitcoin uh, indirectly. You get this, which is about a 50%, almost 50% outperformance over Bitcoin. Pretty incredible. Now, if we go back, one of the things that usually happens in these scenarios is people seem to think that this was a no-brainer. Of course, this was going to happen. But we have to remember that MicroStrategy was the first publicly traded company to do this with material conviction. What do I mean by that? MicroStrategy had about $500 million on their balance sheet. And the initial decision was to take 80 5% of their cash and put it into Bitcoin. You do not make that bet lightly. You do not do that without having deep, deep, deep conviction on the asset. And so if you go back and you look at the interview I did with Michael then, or many of the conversations he's had since, it was just as much about running the Bitcoin as it was running away from a devaluing dollar. And so as we sit today with CPI at a 13 year high, core inflation at a 30 year high, and that inflation eating away at the value of cash, Michael Saylor looks like one of the smartest people in the entire public market industry. Why? Because he understood and was able to protect over half a billion dollars in cash. But he not only protected that purchasing power by converting it from dollars into Bitcoin, he was able to actually grow it materially. And so when you look at when he did this, Bitcoin was trading at about $10,000 or less. Today, it sits at around $45,000 or more. And so more than 4.5x increase in the cost or the purchasing power of that asset at the same time that the asset he left has actually lost the purchasing power. This may be, in my opinion, the greatest trade on Wall Street. Because Michael Saylor said, not only is it good enough for me to take about 85% of my balance sheet and put it into Bitcoin, he then said, I am going to double and triple and quadruple down. And so he's done at least three tranches of debt that I'm aware of, two of them being unsecured loans uh, of 600 million and a billion dollars, if I remember correctly. And the interest rates on these, the first one was 0.75% and the second one was at 0%. And what he did was he took these loans that have very attractive economics on them and he converted 
devaluing currency into a appreciating currency. And so if you think of what people do when they buy a home, we've had Safety Dean come on and talk about the importance of debt in the fiat market. You're able to borrow money today, convert it to a hard asset, and then pay off the debt over the next 15 to 30 years with cheaper dollars. That's exactly what Michael Saylor is doing as well. Some may refer to this as a speculative attack. He is taking dollars and that are given to him, some of them for free in some cases at a 0% interest rate. And he is using that to convert it to an asset that historically has grown at about 200% compound annually for over a decade. So if you're gonna pay 0% interest rate, you're gonna pay 0.75, or even this last tranche that he took, which I think was at six or 7% interest, and you're gonna take that cost of capital and you're gonna convert it to an asset that's grown at about 200% compounded annually, what you are doing is you're arbitraging. My cost of capital is low and the performance of what I'm going to do with it is high and therefore I capture the difference. Now, obviously you have to be careful with a publicly traded business because you can't get too leveraged. You have to be responsible. You also have to understand how much debt you can put onto a business given the cash flows and the capital that's on the balance sheet. But what's fascinating about this is that as the price of Bitcoin rises, your balance sheet expands. And so if you started off with $1 billion in your balance sheet and Bitcoin's price doubles, you now have $2 billion. And if you want to continue to be responsible, but yet still use the capital that you have, that value as collateral to take a loan, you can continue to do this over and over and over again. Now, where people are going to have to be careful, whether you're an individual, you're a private business or a public company, is that you can't get over levered. You're gonna have to be able to weather a really deep drawdown. So if you go and you do this at the top of a bull market and you take 80% uh, value against your collateral, and then you have to weather that drawdown that usually occurs, you will not be able to survive. You will get liquidated on the way down. So responsibility is key in this strategy. But I think that what we're watching is Michael Saylor a year ago had the shot heard around the world. You can see right there, August 11th, 2020, when he adopted Bitcoin as a primary treasury reserve asset. That has led to many other companies doing it, including Tesla and Square, both putting tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions or billions of dollars on their balance sheet. We also, earlier this week, got a piece of news that most people overlooked. There's a company, I think it's a car insurance company called Metro Mile. Metro Mile bought $1 million of Bitcoin and put it on its balance sheet. They have nothing to do with Bitcoin or crypto. Their executive team isn't known to be big Bitcoin enthusiasts, but they took a million dollars, which is a small amount of money, and they did it. We are watching in real time the normalization of putting Bitcoin on balance sheets. And my expectation is that over the next decade, we are going to see majority of publicly traded companies do this. And so if we bring this back to the conversation we just had, where 76% of Bitcoin is held by strong hands who aren't looking to sell it, and you have this wall of public treasury demand coming, it seems to spell Bitcoin's price over a long period of time will only continue to appreciate. Do we think Michael Saylor is actually conducting the greatest trade on Wall Street? Yeah. I mean, especially when you look at it from the history of kind of micro strategy in general, right? He's His stock is up uh, 430% as of today over the last year. The S&P is up 31%, right? And in a given year, 31% is incredible. 430% is obviously insane. And micro strategy over the past two decades, it's performed better over the last year than it did in 20 plus years of existence. So he's clearly made a... Uh, he has strong conviction on Bitcoin as an asset and specifically when it comes to his uh, his balance sheet, et cetera. But I think it's just super impressive. He's got 105,000 Bitcoins now, uh, MicroStrategy does on their balance sheet, average price of $26,000 per Bitcoin. So he's obviously was early to the game, but he continues to buy it. And to your point, like he's finding unique and uh, leveraged plays to add more Bitcoin, right? He's borrowing debt, uh, borrowing money at an insanely low rate, and he's going out to buy an asset that is appreciating at a high rate. So you can quickly see how uh, other publicly traded companies would go and do something like this. And like, there's plenty of companies that have a lot more cash and could do big orders, right? So Tesla came out, they bought 40,000 Bitcoin. Square has 8,000 Bitcoin. Uh, uh, and, and Galaxy maybe has 10 or 12, right? So there's companies that could come out and quickly start to compete with them on a uh, dollar for dollar basis. But I just think that it's a matter of time before we start to see that demand ratchet up again. When we think about Square, Tesla, Metro Mile, and then all of the Bitcoin mining businesses that also have Bitcoin on their balance sheet, 
Is it a foregone conclusion at this point that they will all start to conduct this kind of arbitrage of cheap capital available in the market, take on the debt, turn around, convert it to uh, the hard asset of Bitcoin? Or do we think that that is a very specific high conviction bet that a micro strategy can do because of the CEO's uh, kind of control of the company, uh, the, the shareholders belief in him as an executive, uh, and then his deep conviction in Bitcoin itself and not wanting to ever sell it? Yeah, I mean, it's not for everyone, right? No, not everyone's able to control uh, the the uh, narrative like that, right? And say, hey, look, I'm the CEO of this. I'm the largest shareholder. I'm going to go out and I'm going to acquire this because my conviction in the underlying asset is so strong. But it also depends on where interest rates go, right? If they stay near uh, zero, then you could see why, why other people believe that uh, based on the on-chain metrics we discussed earlier, plus just uh, demand coming into the market and that fixed supply, why they would make the trade. But I think it just depends on like what the cost of capital is, right? And the specific economic of the trade. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching that clip of the best business show. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you know when we go live every weekday, and then head to sofi.com slash pomp so that you can get an account and we can get after it.